Hey, you know what's smart? Birds. Birds are real smart. You know those velociraptors that were in Jurassic Park and there's that scene where they're coming into the kitchen and the kids are in there and they like use their claws to open the door handles like... Yo! You know what evolved from dinosaurs? Birds did. So birds are smart, I'm telling you. Some can solve problems and use tools and they actually think about what they're doing and then some are also even self-aware so like they are reflective of their own thoughts and behaviors should disregard that that's just speculation from me but you get the point hello this is summer speaking welcome to outdoors with some and today we're talking about bird intelligence uh more specifically how did parrots get so smart that's what i want to know all right, today we're using some absolutely iconic New Zealand birds as our models. Um, the Kia, which is an alpine parrot, considered one of the most intelligent birds in the world, and their cousins, the Kaka, which live in the forest. But what I really want to know is, how did they evolve to become so smart? What had to happen in order for them to evolve this intelligence? And what is it specifically that makes them intelligent? Now, usually it's the mammals, the mammals that are um, considered to be intelligent. In particular, lots of research has gone into ape intelligence because it helps us to understand how our own species, humans, uh, their closest relatives, have become as advanced as we are compared to um, other animals. The intelligence of birds, on the other hand, hasn't received quite as much as attention, but it should really, because actually some parts of our brains have developed in very similar ways, even though we haven't been closely related to them for about 300 million years. We also share other ways of living, and those ways of living may be what contributed to us developing such similar brains in the first place. All right, now pay attention. Both apes and parrots, they all have these things in common. First thing, they live in a variable environment. So that means things like um, the food is only available in certain patches, maybe it only ripens at certain times of the year, and the climate is very variable too. So Kia, they're the on only alpine parrots in the world, so they live in um, mountainous areas. But that kind of climate is very difficult, because sometimes during the summer it's really hot and dry, and then in the winter there's um, snow and ice. It means that you have to be able to survive in a whole range of environments that other animals, they just they might live in something that's a little bit more easy. Now, number two is quite a varied diet. Because apes and parrots live in very variable environments, that means that their food sources are often very variable as well. So a great example of that is the kaka. Now, kaka have a huge range of different foods that they can eat. During the summertime, kaka are feeding on things like berries and fruits. Spring, they're after nectar from flowers and they've got a bit of tongue that they can use to put into the flower. Then in the autumn, they can go for things like seeds. Winter, they can crack into bark of trees and that kind of thing, sticks and get at the little insects that are living in there. And also they can um, collect sap from trees too. You have to have a lot of brain power and a lot of know-how to um, know how to access all of those kinds of different foods, um, which leads in quite nicely into the next point. It's number three, which is a long period of development as a juvenile before being independent from the parents. So basically what that means, basically, basically what that means is that the juveniles, the young of parrots and apes, are juveniles for quite a bit longer compared to other species of animals. That's because they need more time to learn how to access all of those tricky foods while they have an adult with them that can look after them. A couple of years ago I was filming juvenile care and I noticed that they often had an adult with them, kind of supervising them while they worked out how to eat all of those different foods. Sometimes they even had to show the juveniles how to do it, which was fun to watch. And that's also how baby orangutans and other apes learn how to get their food as well. Okay, and number four. Number four, live in complex social groups. Socializing's hard. 
Both parrots and apes are very social animals. They're usually hanging around in groups together, hanging out. Uh, you've got your males, you've got your females, you've got your young, um, all ages, all different kinds, and somehow they all have to get along. It actually requires quite a lot of brain power to live in a very social group. You need to be able to recognize each other, form long relationships with each other, and you also need to be able to think about how other members of the group, um, what their relationship is with other with with the members of the group that um, that you're friends with. So all of that is a lot to keep track of. Sometimes I, even I find that hard. <laughs> It's an advantage to be living in a group in this kind of situation. And that's probably because they live in a highly variable environment, so you need to depend on one another um, to be able to survive. Now all of these factors have contributed to parrot and primate brains developing in similar ways, to the extent that our forebrains are actually a pretty similar size relative to our body size, even though we haven't been related for about 300 million years. And now hopefully you'll see parrots in a whole new light too, now that we've seen how similar um, they've evolved compared to primates and what we can learn about um, our own development um, as a result. So yeah, hopefully you think birds are pretty smart now. Maybe I changed your mind. Um, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments and remember to like as well. And you could even subscribe if you want. I don't know. You do you. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.